to to kind of highlight um, how much of an absence mm -hmm. it was to to grow up without having a a dad around. And so I, I think that brought up a lot of difficult feelings for me, even as an adult. I would think so. I would think so. So how how did you deal with this tremendous change in the nature of your relationship? And and did it take a long time? And is there still difficulty dealing with his his being out? Um, I mean, I think just like I mostly dealt with it through just time progressing and um, adjusting to it and having difficult conversations with my dad about about how how hard it was growing up with with him in prison and and um, how much his absence had always kind of like had weighed on me and um, you know, I, I think there were a lot of feelings of like bitterness and frustration that I couldn't help that were coming up because, you know, he was, he, he got out when I was 22. So I, I had already grown up and, and I think the, the child in me was really angry at that, sure. at that I didn't that I didn't get to, to have a dad and like now all of a sudden he's here and he wants to be in my life and, and he can be. And it's like, there's this, um, there's this void that's always going to exist in me. And I kind of just have to, to learn to accept it and move forward. Did, do you think that he, after he got out, were you able to help him understand what you just said, uh, the the void that was there so many years. Did he understand that? Yeah, I think so. Um, we had a lot of a lot of difficult conversations, and I think through those conversations, we we were able to to have a, a closer relationship. Um, and I I think just becoming an adult um and having like a relationship with with your parents um as you grow up that relationship changes and the mm -hmm. way that that you view your parent changes and you can you know you start to to see them as more of just another person right and i, I think that um that through the conversations that that him getting out the, the conversations that we had surrounding him getting out, um, I, I kind of realized um, how how alike we we both are, and how we've both um, had a lot of suffering in our lives, and and I think that that we were able to find a lot of common ground in oh, that. That's great. And that I think I give you so much credit because I think if you hid or buried many of those feelings that you just described and he didn't know about them, I think that would damage the relationship. And with, with openness and honesty, um, I think you get a great deal of credit for strengthening the relationship with your dad. I, I think it had to really come from you, not him. Would you agree? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I think my my dad realized when when he got out after the first few times that we saw each other that that there were a lot of things that I wasn't saying, and I think he could tell that mm -hmm. that it was like a really surreal, kind of overwhelming experience for me, and um. And he kind of um, gave me like permission to to withdraw from our relationship for a while and to mm. figure out um, my own feelings. And he didn't put any pressure on me to to immediately accept him or to you know like only feel 
joy. I think so many of, of his friends and so many of our, like our family friends, um, like they, they only had joy when he got out, which makes sense because they don't, Mm -hmm. they don't have that more complicated relationship with him that, that I do with him being my father. Sure. But I think that the amount of, of joy that I was kind of, um, that I was in the middle of, um, and it just felt like everyone was just putting all of their happy feelings on me. And I think that that ended up being a little suffocating sure. um, because I, it, it made me feel like I didn't have the, the space or the permission to feel and work through um, more complicated emotions. Sure. And why, why would you be, I'm sure people were thinking, why would you be sad or unhappy that he's getting out? You should be delighted. And uh, you, there, it was far, far more complicated than just that. Now, um, how you're very far apart distance wise now, how often do you get to see your dad? Um, well, I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while. Um, and I, I probably won't see him for, you know, however long it, it takes till there's a vaccine and, yeah. and it's safe to travel again and, and all that. Um, I see. So it's but, mo- mostly because of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't want to see him until, until there's a vaccine and, it, and it's safe to, to travel and see people. I think, and, you know, I care about him too much to right. expose yeah. him to anything, but I, I had seen him. Um, When's the last I saw time? him in, in October oh, uh, wow. last year. A year ago. So, wow. Long time. So uh, this is so pervasive, where people are not able to see uh, their their families because of this. But at least you are in very close touch by phone, right? Is that do you email each other as well, or mostly just call? Uh, I talk to my dad on the phone all the time, um, and I don't know. I, I feel like maybe it's just because he was in, in prison for so much of my life, but I, I don't feel so much like I need to, to mm-hmm. see him all the time in order to to feel close to him. And um, I wanted to ask you, what what's your life like now in terms of what you what you do uh, as uh, as for your work? What do you do? Um, I work for a nonprofit. And what what nonprofit is that? Um, it's it's called Prison Radio, and um, what we do is we record um, like audio essays that incarcerated people write, and then we distribute those to uh, different radio stations, mm. so that kind of like the the average person can can get some insight from from people who who are in prison about what their lives are like and what opinions they have and hmm, that's great that, where does it go out to many different stations across the country or very limited um we have we have quite a few different uh radio stations that that broadcast um, our audio recordings, and then we also have a website where they all get uploaded, so that anybody hmm. can access any of them at any time. And we okay. um, we publish uh, books as well. Can you give us your website so maybe interested people could uh, go to it? Yeah, it's just a prisonradio.org. Okay, that's that's easy. And can you listen <laughs> to the? Um, the essays on the website or you have to access it through a radio station? You can listen to all of them on the website. Oh, great. I think I'll do that. That sounds great. Well, Aaliyah, we are just about out of time and uh, I am so pleased that you were able to share your thoughts and your feelings with us today. I think they are unique to you, but probably not to a lot of children who have walked in your shoes um, 
and had a parent in prison. And some children still do. And and like you, you know, may have them in prison for forever. So you've gotten to see both sides of the bars, so to speak. Uh, I I'd so appreciate your, your time and willingness to uh, be on the show today. So thank you so much, Aaliyah. And uh, yeah, thank you. Take good care of yourself. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we, we uh, would like our listeners to tune in next time because uh, Aaliyah's dad, Ken Hartman, will be back with us to uh, tell us what his life has been like since he has gotten out of prison nearly three years ago. So this is Harriet Hendel, and I will see you next time on Pursuing Justice. Thank you.